Ah, a serious game for serious people, just like me. All right, time to shoot some bugs. Greetings, everyone. This is the Hipster Snack, protecting our Mother Earth from any alien attack. Because today, we are going to talk about the grossly underappreciated Earth Defense Force series, and specifically, the most recent installment, Iron Rain. Describing this game, or any EDF installment really, is a bit of a tricky feat, but I think I'm up for the task. After all, I wear glasses, and that automatically makes me an authority figure on the subject. Just take two parts 1950s sci-fi B-movie, one part 1980s action film, one part early 2000s super robot anime, dump it all into a blender on puree until consistent, and serve it over a healthy dose of up to six player online co-op and a bit of friendly fire. Enjoy! Earth Defense Force is a series of third-person over-the-shoulder shooters, and Iron Rain is no exception. There are some changes though in this installment as Iron Rain was actually developed by a different team from the core EDF line. In fact, this was actually developed right alongside Earth Defense Force 5, and I'm not going to rank one over the other. They're both fantastic games, but they do emphasize different things. Anyway, the story of any given EDF game is pretty consistent. Alien invaders come to Earth with violent conquest on their minds, and they begin by dropping down giant insects like ants and wasps, and ramping up over time with giant spiders, scorpions, alien creatures, and gigantic boss fights right out of a kaiju film. And our job as a member of the EDF is to bring the fight to them and destroy every last one of these invading armies. Iron Rain, in particular, picks up with the earliest days of the battle against the invaders, as top of the line Type S PA gear, a new sort of mobile battle armor, is being field tested against a massive island-sized alien fortress called the Hivecraft. You're thrust right into the thick of things because, really, the tutorial can be summed up in point gun at bug anyway. We then witness the destruction of the fortress, but we see our hero fall in battle, saved at the very last minute by another EDF soldier, who slams his Type S core into our gear to save us at the last moment. Our hero reawakens seven years later from a coma and does the most logical thing that he can think of, immediately re-enlists and returns right back to the fray to continue the war against the alien menace. This is the EDF, we never back down. Something, something, Robert Heinlein, something. So back in we go, joining up with the aptly named Blast Team. And seeing as how just about everything in this game, including the player, will explode at some point, I feel like that's a bit prophetic as far as team names go. Deviating a bit from the EDF norm, we even get canonical squadmates, named people with set nationalities, personalities, and backstories, who will stay with us over the course of the game. As we clear additional missions, we'll even learn more about each of them, like the hotshot Michael or the wise proverb-spewing Takuma. We also learn a bit about the socio-political realities of the EDF and its universe, and that even a war where all of mankind has a unified front to face, there are still some ugly realities. I feel this helps ground the series a little bit more and gives some real weight to the situation, even if it is a story about killing giant ants with rocket launchers. Not only that, you'll learn about a rebellion group that splintered off from the EDF and are using bizarre modified PA gears to control and even breed giant insects so they can control the game's secondary currency slash plot device, the coveted energy gems. These gems are power sources used by the alien invaders, which were recovered from the battlefields and then converted into second and third generation EDF weapons, giving humankind its chance to fight back. Graphically speaking, on its surface, EDF games have never been anything special, oftentimes looking like they're a console generation behind whatever hardware they're supposed to be played on. Iron Rain is a bit of an exception because it actually looks kinda sharp. Nothing bleeding edge, obviously, but the fact that it looks clean and presentable, all the while throwing 300 ants on screen at the same time, using very subtle technical tricks to make it all work without choking out a GPU, is impressive. And I think it's because of this that EDF games do get a hard time from their presentation. People don't stop to consider the logistics that have to go into rendering that many enemies, their polys, their animations, and their AI all at the same time. Plus, this is probably the most polished the series has ever looked, so you really can't sell it short now. And in terms of sound, I love it. The soundtrack is loud and triumphant like the EDF itself. The music scores are fast tempo and suit any action scene extremely well. 
It's also really varied, as there are also mood tracks like the pop song that cues when the radio personality, Olivia, comes over the radio to encourage the EDF on her talk show. And that's another thing. The voice actors all do a great job. There are some legit moments, particularly after you finish a mission and you're getting the results, where they really just shoot the breeze and talk about their personal lives. It brings the player closer to the story, I think. As opposed to EDF4, where I felt we were jumping all over the world, spot to spot, and everything felt very disconnected and impersonal. Though, as an aside, I was personally disappointed that the singing that appeared in EDF4 and 5 was absent from this installment, though the dancing does help make up for it. Oh, and it felt really weird when I heard Mike Pollock using his Dr. Eggman voice for a soldier in this game. That kind of threw me off a bit, and yet at the same time, that makes entirely too much sense to me. So the story and gameplay, as I mentioned, kind of go hand in hand. First, among your new snazzy gear, you'll pick your PA gear, or the equal of your class from traditional EDF games. You'll start with just two, the Trooper and the Jet Lifter. Or for you old school EDF fans, they're basically the equal of the Ranger and the Wing Diver. The Trooper is the all-rounder with decent armor, decent mobility, courtesy of a dash, and decent item capacity. More on that in a sec. Jetlifters compromise on defense for additional mobility, essentially being outfitted with a jetpack, hence the name. Eventually, as you progress in the campaign, you'll get the Heavy Striker, or the Fencer, and the Prowl Rider, which is a brand new class that completely replaces the Air Raider, and I say thank goodness for it. Heavy Strikers, as the name might imply, sacrifice mobility for pure armor, and they don't even have a dodge roll, they instead have a barrier that will shield them from incoming projectiles. My hat goes off to any who can master this class since it clearly was not designed for me. Prowl Riders, however, are similar to Troopers, but pretty much superior in every way, using Spider-Man-like grappling hooks for added mobility and the ability to summon a giant pet insect all of your own. Once you pick your gear, which gives you your stats, you'll then pick two weapons you want to carry into battle. Word of advice from a veteran. Always, always, always have at least one long-ranged weapon on hand. I know there are situations where two strong, short-range weapons might seem more useful, but trust me when I say this, you can end up in no-win situations in some unusual boss fights because of this. Always at least one long-ranged weapon. So now that you're decked out and sufficiently bored of my lecture, it's time to start shooting some invading aliens. You start the mission either solo, in split-screen two-player co-op, or in up to six-player online co-op. I have to say, EDF is at its best when you have friends with you, so be sure to look for me and Ditaku. We play the game from time to time online. Our screen names are Deaton and Hipstersnack, as you see here. The password is the same as the one on my luggage. Hint. Hint. Anyway, the point of any given mission is to wipe out the invaders. Sometimes this will involve defending a particular area as they pour in from the surrounding areas, or sometimes you'll need to go headlong into their nests and wipe them out as they approach in waves. Of course, most missions are rarely so straightforward, and they'll oftentimes have their criteria change as the situation develops, with EDF, Alien, and Rebellion forces all playing their own pieces and sometimes simultaneously. All this makes the battlefield feel dynamic and active. You'll constantly be adapting to the situation as it comes. Some missions will take 5 minutes real time, and sometimes one will take upwards of 20. That's just part of the fun, really. You'll never know what to expect. After a mission ends, you'll be rewarded in credits and whatever energy gems you collected, minus any deductions, like the rather arbitrary one that you'll get penalized with, a cash deduction for using items in field, or sometimes you'll drop gems if you die and then have to respawn. You'll also unlock additional weapon purchases after clearing each mission on each subsequent difficulty, rarer and stronger weapons typically getting unlocked in later missions and higher difficulties. You then balance your expenses by purchasing additional health, and that gets expensive quick, using cash and gems to get new weapons, and occasionally even new clothes. Iron Rain goes heavy on customization and allows you to deck your soldier out how you see fit, on top of just weapons and armor. This is why you get to witness this glorious recreation of yours truly as humble EDF soldier, Prowl Rider for life. So before I fanboy too hard, are there any ways the game could be improved upon? Well, not having all four classes out of the gate this time was a little disappointing, especially since my favorite's the last one you actually unlock. And it's also a little jarring that, unlike other EDF titles, you never have friendly soldiers on the ground with you during missions. They'll talk to you, and there's the implication that they're in the same zone, on similar yet different missions, but it feels a little lazy. 
Not that I miss the AI for the friendlies and EDF as they're terribly robust. It was just a nicety from past installments that I personally preferred to have. And in honesty, all Earth Defense Force games are inherently grindy, but this one is for completely different reasons. Your HP goes up when you purchase it from the shop, and you'll only unlock new weapons for purchase when completing new missions. You don't have the chance to get new gear or even upgraded models of old gear just by playing levels that you played before, unlike you can in EDF 5. Losing that feature did make me feel a bit more pressed to try harder difficulties, even if it makes the missions kind of a slog to do that. Iron Rain's already a bit tougher than most installments already, so that just sort of made it worse. But at the end of the day, what makes EDF stand out from virtually any other third-person shooter game? I explained all the mechanical nuance and upgrades and customization, but what makes these games good? I'll tell you what, fun. Earth Defense Force is an action game set in the context of an aforementioned schlocky 1950s sci-fi horror B-movie. Random civilians are screaming and running away from what they call the monsters, an EDF command is taking the situation deathly seriously, despite the fact the entire idea is goofy beyond belief. It's silly and an absolute joy to play with friends, blowing bugs to pieces with rocket launchers, laser swords, machine guns, remote mines, and more. It's an over-the-top, extremely absurd adventure that gets better the more buddies you bring with you to fill out the squad. I have to say, there is little quite as satisfying as sailing through a downtown metropolis Attack on Titan style, firing an oversized bazooka from off my shoulder while one of my best friends flies in as a swimsuit model clad in a jetpack holster, blowing bugs away with plasma and lightning rifles. The game, in a single word, is fun. And the fact that it's so unknown is a real shame, and one that you, and the one listening right now, ought to help fix. There's always an online session open, so fire the game up, clear the one mission long tutorial, and get out there and fight the good fight for humankind. Join us now on Steam and PS4. This has been the Prowl Rider Snack on behalf of the EDF. If you liked today's video, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment below on what PA gear you like to rock. If you want more like this every week, you can tap that subscribe and bell icon so you never miss a moment when new content drops. You can even follow me on Twitter, at HipsterSnack, for updates and hints at future content, or even go the extra mile by becoming a patron at my Subscribestar page, link always in the description. And I hope you continue joining me here every week from our obscure views and indie excellence. The EDF deploys.